Great pleasure to welcome back uh, to our show today. A woman was with us uh, just about a year ago when uh, she had her previous book out. She's got another great one out. It's already a, a bestseller. Saw it on the New York Times a bestselling list. Joined now by Mary Higgins Clark, whose latest novel is called I'll Walk Alone. Mary, thanks for being uh, with us again. How have you been in the last year? Busy, I guess. You know, it goes too quickly. You know, you say last year and you go, go with talk last month. But it's been a good year. Thanks very much. I hope yours has been, too. It has been, yeah, busy, like you say. But, yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to remind ourselves too much how time passes. But, uh, but it's good when you're an author. You get a, 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 about a book a year, I guess, is your, has been your average, hasn't it? Yes, yes, I do a book a year. And sometimes, you know, Carol and I do a book together. My daughter, Carol, they can sure. talk. We do the Christmas mysteries with her, Rake, and Riley, you know, continuing character, right. and my Elvira. But we didn't do one last year because we both felt we needed a, a breath of fresh air and <laughs> a little more time. Because we each do a book, you know, it, that comes out in April, and that would be besides the Christmas book. I, I get a chance down here. I grew up in New York, but I get a chance down here to listen to uh, to Don Imus. I know you go on with him quite a bit. Uh, I know he's uh, you're one of his favorite authors. That must be kind of fun to be on his show. Huh? Oh, it's fun because you know, <laughs> you know, Don does not want to want to say I love you and you love me. It's always kind of a tennis game that you right. play. Right. <laughs> I mean, I was introduced once as having been there so around so long that I wrote the book of Deuteronomus. <laughs> I said it wasn't Deuteronomus, it was Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason I bring it up. I mean, he, he's such a great show for entertainment purposes, but he's great for authors. He's one of the few left, I guess, on a national level that gives authors a chance to really talk about uh, their books. Uh, so. About, about about their books and uh, no, we we have Carol and I go on together and his shtick is you know why to Carol is why are you trailing your mother and of course she has 14 <laughs> books of her own out as well as five with sure. but you know he's nice to me but then of course he asks about my husband well what is that retired executive of yours doing was he involved in the Wall Street all these guys getting arrested at the <laughs> end <laughs> So, you know, that's the kind of banter, but it's fun. It is fun, yeah. Before we get into the, the current book, Mary, I was just thinking before we went on, uh, during the year, like when the previous book is out, do you get a lot of people that, that are your readers send you emails with ideas for future books, or how, does that happen to you, or, or do you have to kind of put that out of your mind so you come up with a totally unique idea on your own? Well, you see, you don't want anyone's idea because... Right. You know, unfortunately, we're in a world of litigation, and people will say, you stole my idea. Yeah. So the last thing I want is someone's idea. And unfortunately, we have to refuse manuscripts, right. you know, unpublished manuscripts, because the author may say, uh, she took that from my book that I sent her. So we, we beg people not to send manuscripts in. They go right back out. And yet, you know, I do know what it was like to get my first book published. I do know about rejection slips. My first short stories were out for six years before the first one sold. The first one had been out 40 times when a little magazine paid me $100 for it. So I do sympathize with the beginning writer, but you can't read unpublished work. I always wonder, I'm sure you get a lot of letters and emails from fans, but I'm sure they always try and give you ideas. You have to sort of sort of edit those out, I guess, while you're, you know, you're reading your fan mail, but I uh, just wanted to have that work for you. But I always do if someone gives me, you know, what wants to give me an idea. I say, look, that's your story. Right. <laughs> story. You put, put it down on paper. And I tell what, someone who has never tried any writing, I say, go to a community class where you uh, uh, get an assignment to write, because that'll get you in with people who have the same ambitions. I mean, in my first short story writing course all a thousand years ago, we <laughs> formed a writer's group better than we met for 40 years. Wow. I mean, we met once a week, and I'm in a writer's group right now. I mean, we don't judge each other's work, but we meet once a month just to rap about writing, just to be friends, just to be up what you're up to, Nelson DeMille, Susan Isaacs, uh, Linda Fairstein, Carol, myself, I mean, uh, really good authors, really successful authors, but, but we are, but it's always fun to be with people who are in your field, 
And the new people, I think it's the best thing they can do for themselves is sign up for a writing class, whether it's a novel, whether it's a short story, whether it's in a mystery field, you know, historical field. Uh, sign up because you're getting support, real support. And it is, uh, like anybody in the, that has been writing, I've done that, that kind of writing, but in uh, you know, the broadcast business, it's a discipline. You have to force yourself to do it sometimes, right? Yes, you do. You do have to force yourself to do it, but the rewards are great if yeah. you, you stick at it. I mean, I can't not write. It's that simple. Uh, people say, uh, aren't you going to retire, relax? And I said, well, what do I relax to? <laughs> I don't like the ladies who lunch business. <laughs> I'm not a gardener. I love pretty flowers. Uh, I am happiest when, after I've turned a book in and then maybe two months passes, uh, then it's time for me to get up there because my mind is working and it's saying, how about how about that? And uh, in between phone calls this morning, I've been writing scenes of my new book. Oh, but a nice one. That's great. Yeah. Well, this current one is called I'll Walk Alone, and, and you deal with uh, something I think many people, unfortunately, have had to go through is, is identity theft. Uh, I guess you're dealing a lot with technology and all that. That must have been kind of interesting to do some uh, research on that, right? And it's interesting to do it, but I thought it's not just identity theft, which is awful, but it's one more thing. A woman who looks like Zan's clone. Right. Dan is the interior designer who is the main character. There is a picture of her stealing Matthew, a quite three years old, Dan's little boy, out of the stroller. And the picture has emerged on his fifth birthday. He's been missing for two years. And it looks as though she was the one who stole her own child while the babysitter was asleep on the grass in Central Park on a warm day. And now people honestly think, and the police think, this kid was getting in her way. She was raising him alone. Her career is everything to her. And they believe that he has, she has probably killed him. But they indict her for his kidnapping. And everyone says, but it's obviously your, you in that picture. Obviously. Mm. And she is pleading with her friends, don't be sorry for me. Believe me. Believe me. I am not the woman in that picture. I am not. So you, can you imagine if you, someone believes that you were a kidnapper? Sure. Even the saleswoman with, uh, she buys from in Saks Avenue said, well, you bought those clothes. She said, I did not. She said, well, you bought them. So what can you do when you're surrounded by everyone turning either into an enemy or a friend who thinks you have simply lost it? Great premise. Yeah, people are going to be interested in that. Of course, uh, the name of the book is called I'll Walk Alone. It's published by Simon & Schuster. We've been talking with uh, Mary Higgins Clark, and uh, MaryHigginsClark.com is your website. People can get a hold of you that way, right? And uh, maybe get an autographed copy. I think they can order it that way over your website. Is that right? And on Facebook, of course, because Facebook, I'm on Facebook right. a fan of and, uh, and I love to get the comments from readers. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. It really is a lot of fun. Because we can interact the way no one would have dreamt you could 20 years ago. It really has made the, the work of an author a little bit uh, easier, I guess, to, to, like you say, interact with with your readers. So that must be interesting for yes, you. Yes, and it's enjoyable yeah. to do it. But on the other hand, authors have to keep up with technology. Right. Now, think of a cell phone. If, a cell, if you are missing, almost everyone has a cell phone. And they can even tell where it is. Right. GPS, the cell and phone. And vicinity. Right. I, well, my detectives in this one, I have two retired detectives, and I send them 25 pages at a time to make sure I'm doing things right. And one of them called me while I was writing this book. I have a detective carrying an umbrella in the rain, walking from the school to visit the next witness. And he, Steve said, Mary, detectives don't carry umbrellas. They might need to reach for their guns. <laughs> they, detectives do not walk in the rain. We detectives drive a car. <laughs> <laughs> Little details. He said we wouldn't have indicted her in the Central Park Station. We take her down to Central Booking. Right. And these are the things that are very important that they're right when they go into that manuscript. Yeah, that's great. 
Well, Mary, I know we're kind of limited time today. Appreciate you uh, joining us again here in Sarasota area. I know the people down here love love books, and uh, they'll go right out and get it. It's called uh, I'll Walk Alone, and we look forward to uh, the one coming up uh, later this year. I guess we'll have a Christmas book. We'll talk to you then. Well, when you have, they have the Christmas book, we'll surely have April books. Great. Thanks, Mary. Thanks a lot. Bye now.